love history. Did your yeah. wife keep her maiden name? May I try to call you? Did you change your number? Oh, what you wearing? You smell good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchos thank you. That's right. Ronnie popped we, into the uh, we, we look like two guys, uh, the <laughs> sequel to Coming to America right there, don't we? <laughs> Oh uh, uh, Anthony Castro Vince of MLB.com has uh, taken a cue from the top 10 right now series to cook up a list of his own. We welcome uh, Anthony to you the like program. like Italians, baby? Oh, yeah, we like Italians. <laughs> we like our Cleveland Italians especially. Uh, Anthony, good morning. You've written of the deepest positions in Major League Baseball, and you've ranked them kind of 1 through 10. So I guess we'll start with a positive. Um, go through what you think are the deepest positions in the game uh, and reveal, I guess, three to one. Yeah, I figure if the, if the shredder can rank the players, I can rank the positions themselves. So at number three, I've got, appropriately enough, third base. Uh, consider this about third base. Last year, Austin Riley, Rafael Devers, Jose Ramirez, all top ten in MLB among all players in extra base hits. And yet, none of those guys were on the all MLB team at third base. That's because you had Manny Machado and Nolan Arenado deservedly taking those two spots. So that's how deep we are at the top at third base. And there's plenty of other talent beyond that. You know, Alex Bregman and Justin Turner still getting it done. Uh, Matt Chapman was curiously left off the Shredder's top 10. I got a bone to pick with the Shredder about that. Uh, and then this year, you know, Gunnar Henderson with the Orioles, he could be on that list a year from now in that top 10 because we saw, uh, you know, a glimpse of, of what he can be at the tail end of last season for the Orioles. So third base is pretty strong right now. Second, uh, I've got relievers, relief pitchers. That's you know the game operates around these guys. Uh, they they take on an inordinate number of innings. Uh, you go you know, top five innings for relievers uh, by season. It's all in the last five full seasons. Uh, last year we had 32 relievers with 40 innings and a whip of 1.0 or better. Uh, so they've just kind of taken over the game. And a lot of them are anonymous. They come out of nowhere. They they throw gas. They throw crazy breaking balls, and then we've never heard of them, and then sometimes they disappear as quickly as they come, but there's always a horde of them. And the number one, I think this should be obvious, shortstops. This is a golden age of shortstops. I think we've seen it in the last two hot stove seasons, right, with the uh, you know major signings and free agency and extensions, uh, Lindor, Seager, Turner, Bogarts. Even if you count Fernando Tatis Jr., he was a shortstop at the time of his extension. In the last 24 months, all those guys have gotten $280 million contracts. Carlos Correa would have been on that list if not for reasons, but just shows the depth there. And then also shows the depth when you look at the top 10 uh, for the Shredders list and Jeremy Pena, Bobby Witt Jr. I mean, these are superstars in the making and they don't even make the cut quite yet. Uh, and last year we had 12 shortstops worth at least four wins above replacement. So that's, that's a pretty strong group. No, Anthony, I was just thinking about uh, all the positions as you started to talk about them. I was wondering why the DH position um, was not didn't really get a foothold um, as the yeah. new rules changed because uh, um, it just didn't seem like you had a, a real legitimate DH for any team. Yeah, I, I had DH last on the list. So DH is obviously not even on the top 10 right now series. There's only 10 guys who had 300 at bats as a DH last year. So if you want to just rank those 10, I guess, but it'd be kind of pointless. I think what it is, Ron, is a couple things. One, I mean, you mentioned the, the NL expanding, kind of waters it down a little bit. You had a lot of guys who would otherwise be bench bats getting DH at bats. Um, but really, it's, it's just more about the evolution of the game where teams see the value of keeping their guys off their feet, and they just rotate uh, position players in and out of the DH spot as opposed to having a tried and true everyday DH. Those are few and far between right now. Uh, Shohei Otani is the best of a bunch, and he happens to be a starting pitcher. So, um, so yeah, DH is not particularly strong at the moment. And I would say you know exactly how to contact the shredder uh, at Brian Kenny on social media right. and let him know how you feel. <laughs> uh, so let's go through the uh, what you feel are the three, I guess, most shallow positions in the sport right now. Yeah, other than other than DH, the, the three shallowest positions um, at, I had at uh, at eight, I had first base. Now, it's not to suggest that. There's not a ton of talent at first base because there is, um, you know, you, you got Paul Goldschmidt as the reigning MVP and Freddie Freeman is, is perennially, uh, you know, an MVP type caliber player. Uh, Matt Olson, Pete Alonso, the list goes on. But it's more about where this first base crop is historically. Last year, we only had three first basemen with slugging percentages of 500 or better. Collectively, first basemen had their lowest slugging percentage since 1992. It's kind of strange. We've gotten away from the, the cliche uh, slugging first baseman. Where'd he go? Um, and then I had uh, left fielders. 
at number nine. Uh, you should see a lot of teams just kind of piecing it together in left field. Actually, the, the top 10 list on the top 10 right now had two guys from the same team, Jordan Alvarez and Michael Brantley. So not a lot of left fielders to choose from there. Uh, and then at number 10, catchers. And I think this is number 10, but rising. Because first of all, you go the last two seasons combined. Combined wins above replacement at catcher the last two seasons. Buster Posey is still in the top 10. and He retired after 2021. So we don't have a lot of everyday catchers right now, but it is trending in the right direction. Adley Rutschman, of course, came up last year with the Orioles. Alejandro Kirk has uh, you know, emerged as an all-star with the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays, of course, just traded Gabriel Moreno to the D-backs, where he could flourish as soon as this year. So we might be on an upswing in the catcher department, but generally speaking, it's, it's, it's rarer to find the true everyday catcher than it used to be. Article is going to post soon on MLB.com. Anthony Kastrovitz going through every position in Major League Baseball. I'd say on catcher, too. It's almost like uh, if you're drafting a running back for your fantasy football team, there's so many timeshares now yeah. that yeah. guys, you know, guys are in there getting equal numbers of at-bats and plate appearances. It's, it's hard to identify one that stands out. Hey, uh, before we let you go, some sad news uh, in Cleveland as far as uh, the, the franchise and uh, longtime Indian slash Guardians fans are concerned. Yeah, absolutely. John Adams uh, passed away yesterday at the age of 71. He had a, he had a lengthy illness. Um, he's the guy banging that drum in the bleacher seats. Uh, shows up one day in 1973 and you know, almost 50 years later was still doing it at every home game. He was uh, you know, such a added so much uh, to the in-game experience to the point where myself as a Clevelander growing up going to games uh, at old Cleveland Municipal Stadium, I thought every team had a guy drumming in the stands. I thought that was just part of Major League Baseball until I got older and got around a little bit and realized, oh, no, this is – this is what makes us special here in Cleveland. He was, he was the number one fan and, uh, you know, wish his family well. But uh, the, uh, a big loss uh, for the Guardians franchise. Yeah, you bet. Uh, appreciate the visit today, Anthony. Again, take a look for that piece posting soon on MLB.com, ranking the positions. Anthony Kastrovitz with us on a Tuesday.